welcome to my channel. If you are new around here, my name is Melissa Morell and I'm a personal stylist for the everyday woman. And today you're joining us for part two of Body Shape Masterclass 33. So if you haven't already seen part one, I'm going to put a link up here for that right now for you. You probably are best to watch part one first of all because they obviously lead on to each other. But in both videos, we're covering off basics. So in part one, we did everything from jewellery, white t-shirts, casual trousers, striped tops, knickers, um, handbags. So we did everything there. But coming up today in part two, we've got everything from trench coats to boots to heels to long boots to short boots. We've got striped shirts. We've got tailored trousers. And I can't remember what else is coming up, but there's lots of different basics. But the focus for both videos is on basic foundation pieces. So these are the pieces that most people need in their wardrobe in order to create a capsule wardrobe. They are timeless, they are classic, and for the most part they are neutral in colour. We add in colour and all the fun elements once you've got these basics in place. We've got our same two models as we used in part one. So we've got Nikki who is five foot six and a half and a UK size 18 on top and a 16 on a bottom. And we've got Antonia and a UK size 12 and she has got a shorter torso. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let me introduce you to our brave volunteers today. We've got Nikki. Nikki's our project director for our Style Academy. And you all know Antonia because she's been on the channel probably more than myself. <laughs> she, only, she only comes on the channel when she wants a new wardrobe. So true. <laughs> true. Between us, we've got I'm five foot three and a half, four, and I'm a size eight to ten. Generally speaking, if there was a size nine, that would be me. I'm smaller on my waist, but I've got more around my hips and my bottom area. So if it's a wide leg trouser, I would go for a size eight, for example, but if it's a tighter trouser, I would go for a size 10. Nikki, you are a size? I'm a size 16, although more of an 18 on top. Yes. Um, bust and also uh, stomach so anything fitted tailored yeah. around the waist high-waisted things I tend to have to go up size yes um, but generally more of a 16 than an 18 yeah but she's got lovely shapely legs as well often when you are a little bit broader around the waist you've got a really flat bottom and you've got incredibly skinny legs and so trying to balance that out is a little bit more difficult Antonia size wise I'm 12 yeah and Problem area is I put on weight on my stomach, generally everywhere, but my stomach mostly. Yes. Um, but yeah, just kind of here, three caesareans, as you've heard before. Yeah. Yeah, when the weight goes on, it goes on my belly. Yes. Um, okay. And similar to Nikki, I don't, you know, not much in the way of wide hips. Yeah. But I always feel broader. Yes. At the top. And okay, very similar outfits again all in slightly different styles based on body shape and what is putting us back into an hourglass shape. So starting off with Nikki here, I had her in a pair of tight trousers earlier on today and I promised her some baggy comfy ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and have we got there? Yes, these are lovely. Yeah, yeah really, really lovely, really, comfy. really easy to wear. Yeah, yeah. Like you had to go down a size on these ones. Did, yes. So you were definitely a 16 on these yes. rather than the 18. Um, and are they still comfortable on the waist being yeah, 16 they are, as yeah. well? They've got a little tie as well, so yeah, they're absolutely... Yeah. Pockets. Fine pockets, of yeah, course. Yeah, nice. Of course. Um, so rather than the cropped version, obviously, we've just got a different style here. But if this style isn't for you, then Antonia is wearing an alternative. So that's the cropped ankle grazer. It's from New Look. Cardigan wise, slightly different cardigans. This one is cashmere and from the White Company, so more expensive. This one is from Marks and Spencers and a lot cheaper. So again, we're trying to cater for everybody's different budgets, but I think you'll agree that overall you can create a very similar look. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it doesn't mean you, know, you have to spend the money on this type of cardigan to create the look. 
just to point out, I don't think we have done this before, but these tops that both myself and Antonia are wearing are from New Look. I'm just going to pull my jumper down just so you can see the shape of these a little bit. I really like these because they completely cover the bra strap and then they are low enough here to show a lot of the neck, neck area, but they're not baggy in that area, nor are they too low. However, that said, I think on yourself they would have been too short. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you like a little bit of extra. A no, I like the length of the front particularly because of my shape. Yes, because of your bust. They've got to go over your bust first of all. And they still it? sit level at the bottom. Yes. yes, yeah. So the Boda one, which is the one we've got on now, does that a lot better. It does, yes. So if you've got the boobs and a little bit of the tummy going on, you go for the Bowden. And if you are shorter in the body or petite um, or smaller chested, then you go for these new look ones. And we will link everything for you. Um, my outfit. So these neck jumper and uh, this is a cashmere one this is from John Lewis it's got some beautiful but very subtle um, stitching detail around there I like it bigger and baggier I think I've gone up by about three or four sizes on this jumper and then I have got on my favorite me and M joggers <laughs> these are just so super comfortable and personally I think they give a really nice silhouette yeah, they do. So yes. they, they're kind of a little bit bell-bottomy, aren't they? So it makes it feel and look a little bit more elevated than a normal yeah, jogging pant definitely. bottom. Um, the only reality of this, we just had this conversation offline, is we all, we're all dog walkers. <laughs> and when you've got a wide leg trouser on like this, you think you're sorted for the daytime because you're in your comfies and then you need to go and walk the dog twice a day and we're still getting changed, aren't we, to do that? Yeah. Which is a real shame. And we, we've we shown you some Sweaty Betty trousers. I think that's where the Sweaty Betty trousers will give the tightness around the ankles mm -hmm. and the comfort during the day. So I think probably going more on those lines, if you're a an avid dog walker, then perhaps a longer, wider leg is probably more relevant to your lifestyle. Okay, so we've all got our flash of max on. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're all wearing, no, we're not all wearing the same trousers. You two are wearing the same trousers. Oh, yes. And you guys have got the Marks and Spencer's trousers on. Can we just open it up just mm -hmm. so they can see that a little bit? Uh, pockets. Yes. Elasticated waist? Yes, yes indeed. Well, is it? Yeah, yes, 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 it is. yes. Sorry, it's yes. Elasticated. It is elasticated, but it hasn't got an actual um, button or anything at the no, top, has it? No, it's all flat fronted. Fit, that's it, flat fronted. Um, I know you don't like doing it, girls, but can you turn to the side? Because that's what they want to see. <laughs> what, 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 the, what the waistline is like from the side there. Yeah. It, look, it sits really nice and flat. And there are Marks and Spencer's trouser. In both cases, you can turn back round now. <laughs> In both cases, um, we've had to turn them under. So at five foot six and a half, mm -hmm. I would be getting you the regular. And for yourself, if there is an extra short, we'd go for the mm. extra short ordinarily. Yeah. Otherwise, unfortunately, you're just going to have to turn the short up. They do stay up though, because they're a bit stiffer. Yes, so a bit, that's a bonus. Yeah, a bit thicker. So my trousers are from me and M. They are elasticated waist. I've turned mine up just once as well, but essentially they're the same type of trouser, which is just a navy tapered ankle grazer. So you can see our ankles on all of them. Now, I know that in the comments, the biggest question is going to be, well, what happens in winter when you can't show your, or you don't want to show your ankles? The simple answer is you just wear a boot and then you can wear a sock underneath the boot. But as I showed you at the start of the video, you must make sure that the shaft of the boot is really tight against your ankle. Then it will give the same profile as if you are showing a bare ankle. You can also wear a sock these days. You often see people with um, that's these. That's the modern and, way. Yeah, that's doing. the modern way. I just don't know whether at our age we'd look old-fashioned yeah. rather than fashionable. We wore them the first time around. Yes. Yeah, that tall socks. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, but just wear a boot. That is the answer. And there isn't any other solution. I get a lot of people ask me for perhaps to try and reinvent the wheel, but I'm like, there's no way I can reinvent the wheel. There's no. not a special thing that you can do. To be fair, wear. though, I flash my ankles in the winter anyway, because yeah, I do. I'm not often outside for very long. Yes. 
in you know with bare ankles so yeah. it might just be to run from here to the station or and yes. then I'm indoors. So. Yeah. yeah. I think we have a very different weather, obviously, True. compared to some of our friends in Canada, for example, yeah. where, you know, you need to be in full-on moon boots to walk anyway. <laughs> so we do appreciate that, but the quick answer is that you just wear boots instead. So I've just kept the same jumper on that I had on before, but the main focus here is on the three different trench coats that we're wearing. So starting off with mine, mine is from Marks and Spencers. The first thing that I always look for on a trench coat for pretty much anybody is that we've got the, I always say not lapels, it's not lapels, the epaulets there on the shoulders because structure starts the hourglass figure, okay? So when you, as soon as you've got a drop shoulder there, you're going to make yourself look broader. Now the Mark Suspensers one, as you can see, is quite a stiff fabric, so it is a waterproof or water resistant coat as well. It's a size 12, so I'm usually an 8 to 10, but I've got a thick woolly jumper underneath it. I want to be able to do it up in the winter, so I've sized up. It doesn't matter that I'm not a size 12. I've bought for the size that suits me for my lifestyle. So obviously there's a point I'm trying to make there that we really need to stop looking at the labels, um, order in a few sizes and then actually mock it up at home and say, well, I know I'm going to wear this in winter conditions. So put a jumper on underneath to get the right sizes. Um, Nikki here is in this beautiful flowing trench coat. Can you remember when we did our video, Six Women Six? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we learned from that video is that a flowing trench coat, and Antonia hasn't got exactly the same one on, but again, it is more of a drapey fabric, is more flattering. Well, it, flat, it flatters everyone. Mm -hmm. That suits everyone. This, for example, on yourself, Antonia, you would just look like Inspector Gadget. Yeah. <laughs> it would just look too stiff. You'd look shorter and yeah. you would look wider. Nikki, you could probably get away with it more because you've got the height. But generally speaking, the more drape you've got in a trench coat, the more flattering it's going to be. Okay, so let's have a look at some basic footwear. I cannot cover every type of footwear possible um, for the same reason as we couldn't cover every single bra. It would just take too long. It's a video in itself, and maybe I will do a whole video. So I'm just going to talk top line generic thoughts around the basic shoes that most of us need in our wardrobe. Okay, so starting off with a black boot. Um, I actually like a light coloured boot personally myself, but I know that most people prefer a black boot. And there's a very big difference in styles of black boots. Let me start by showing you these two boots. So, both relatively pointed. Um, we know that a pointed shoe is going to elongate us and looks far better than a rounded toe shoe if we're trying to elongate our figures and if we're trying to go for a more of a smarter look. And that's often not the case. We've got rounded ones coming up. But in this instance here, we've got what looks like two very similar boots. However, they are very different. One works and one doesn't. And the reason that one works over the other is all to do with the shaft of the boot here. So I'm sure you've heard me talk about showing your ankles all the time. So you can see right now, I've got a little heel on, I've got the front of my foot showing, because especially with a wide leg jean like this, that's going to help elongate my foot. So the same applies when you're looking at boots. So, these ones have got a really tight leather shaft on them, which means that when they go up your leg, it's going to make the, the leg look as thin as possible. And that's achieved by the fact that it's really soft, mouldable leather. It's not really stiff. These ones, however, are really stiff. Now, in the picture on the website, they look like they were going to give a really slim, slender shaft. Can you see that? Even I was duped into buying them thinking that was going to be the case. Let me show you the difference when I've got them on. So on the right leg here, I have got the boots on that have got a stiffer leather around the ankle. These ones here have got a softer leather around the ankle, but it's sitting closer to the ankle. So personally, I think 
these ones here are going to be more flattering than these ones on this side. This is going to create more of a brick-like look and feel. Hopefully the camera is picking up on that for you. And that is the reason why we would select this one, so the softer leather, the one that sits closer to the ankle, over this version. So we'll make sure that this version is linked for you. Now I get it that that style of boot isn't always practical for people. The sole, for example, it doesn't have enough grip on. So the type we tend to use when the weather turns is something like this. So yes, they are more rounded. However, when we select these, it's a little bit um, the same as a leather trainer. We always go for one that is a little bit more pointed than really rounded. You know, like a workman's boot that is very rounded at the toe. So you you want to go for a little bit more slender there. The elastic on these usually means that they sit closer to the ankle for the reasons that we've just described. When they are leather all the way round, it's usually too stiff and doesn't go up the shaft very nicely. So that would be the alternative. But this is going to give a very different look to the pointed one. So let me show you the difference of what that looks like. There you go, there's the difference in the looks. And I think there's a time and a place for probably both looks, certainly for my wardrobe, but is there for yours? And that, what, that's what you need to ask yourself. If you need a smarter boot, then go for one that is more pointed. If you need a more robust boot, go for something on those lines. But you can see that it does create a completely different look. Now often when I've got a chunkier boot on like that, I might then add in a wool coat and the wool long coat almost adds another feminine element to the outfit because this boot is very quite masculine and quite heavy. So when you add the coat in, you get a slightly different look. Okay, so the next thing that we put in most people's wardrobe is some sort of flat shoe. So I've just got a collection of three right now in my hand. I think we're going to use these across the video at some point. As you all probably know, we prefer a pointed shoe. Okay, for all the reasons I've said many a time before, it elongates the foot. It makes the legs look slimmer. When we go for a rounded toe, it's going to make you look shorter and it's going to make you look wider. A lot of people need to go for a rounded toe because of feet issues. I've had two feet operations myself. I do get it. However, I personally feel a lot better when I've got a pointed shoe on. And there are certain brands of shoes, Vivea being one of them, that are so super comfortable because of the knitted fabric that the point on them isn't as pointed as something like that out, that is made out of leather. So if you have got feet issues, I would tend to say go for more of the fabric knitted ones rather than the leather versions of them. But some sort of compromise, something like that. So that is an almond toe shoe. So that can look very old fashioned or very fashionable. And what I would say about that is that that won't necessarily stand the test of time from a, a clothing point of view. So at the moment it's fashionable, but probably in a year's time it won't be fashionable. Something like that stays around forever. So it depends whether you want the longevity in your wardrobe or not. Adding on from there, we tend to put a very small heel in a lot of people's wardrobes. And we go for the small heels because they're more wearable. And you're more likely to pull out a smaller heel than you are a really high heel shoe, knowing that your feet are going to really hurt for the rest of the evening. So I can wear these all day long. And as I said, I've got pins in my toes. I've had loads of feet operations. And as you can see, we've got a leopard print here. Those ones there are very nice. They are from H&M. I think they were in their premium selection. They are um, leather, so we will make sure that we link them. But if you're looking for something a little bit funkier, a little bit more on trend, then I'm wearing these a lot at the moment. I love that shape. I find that shape really elegant on a lady's foot. And look how small the heel is. And look, that actually means I can wear exactly the same pair of trousers or jeans because the heel height on my everyday boot here 
is actually exactly the same size as my heel height on my going out shoes. And that's the important bit because that would allow you to go from one to the other seamlessly. There we go. Oh, sorry, we're about to be interrupted by Monty. Monty, I'm trying to show shoes, sit down. Sorry about that. Okay, so as you can see right now, even with this very easy to wear outfit, I can elevate the outfit up with the little shoe like that, or I can wear my winter boot, put on perhaps, a, you know, a normal casual handbag, and I've got my daytime outfit. That is what you're looking to achieve with your shoe collection. Then if I grab my flats, I could equally wear exactly the same outfit, but with that flat shoe. And that's because I've got basics on. They're all basic colours. All of my shoes are in complementary colours. And that's the important thing that you need to take away from this when you're looking at your shoe collection, that you're using similar colour tones, same size heel, and you're making your footwear appropriate for your lifestyle. And there's one other type of boot that I have in my personal wardrobe, which is a long brown boot. So the two that I have in my wardrobe are these two. So this one is from Bowdoin. They do them in the black as well. It's a beautiful shape. It's not too pointed at the front, um, but it's not rounded either. I feel like the heel is a decent enough size to give me some height, but it's not too high. And it fits really elegantly up the leg. And then the other one that I'm wearing a lot at the moment are these ones here. Look at the heel. It's really quite small. It's not too pointed again, it's a little bit more rounded and it fits really nice up at the leg. Now, one thing I would say is that I've got quite a large calf compared to um, the rest of my leg and these are a little bit tight on my calf where these come up quite generously. If you do have a larger calf, there are specific sites that you can go to where you actually measure your calf and they will make the boots to the right size or there's certainly like three or four different car width, calf widths to choose from. Like I said before, we can't go into every variation in this video. I will probably do a dedicated shoe video if that is what you want. The extra addition that I've got in my footwear is I've got a heavier loafer and I've also got wellies because I'm dog walking all the time. And that really completes most of the footwear that I wear throughout the autumn and winter months. We've gone casual. The only problem with this is Monty is sitting down there wagging his tail thinking we're about to take him for a walk because this is the type of thing I would go walking in. I just add my wellies to it as well. Um, so what have we got on girls? Let's start off with your trousers first of all because you've both got the same on and well do you want to tell them how comfy they are they're never coming off <laughs> no they're, we're they're, they're dangerous <laughs> because they, you would never take them off they're yeah incredible and I, why i like these these are the sweaty betty trousers why i like these is that you can do yoga you can go for a run in them but you could wear them all day long mm. and what you're not in is the skinny tight trouser so a lot of people aren't comfortable in a skinny trouser. Um, although I always say, even if you're not comfortable in a skinny trouser, if you were then to put that coat over them, you can't really see much of the skinny trouser. Yeah. But I get it, other people want an alternative. This is the alternative. They come in three different leg lengths. However, I found that I could only get a, an option of two different leg lengths online, and I could get the shorter one, the extra short for yourself, in store. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't know why that is. So you meant to have a 25 and a half, a 27 and a half, and then there's a 29 inch as well. Yep. Elasticated waistband, isn't it, guys? Yes, yeah, lovely. Stretchy. Yeah, really Everything nice. stretchy. Yeah, really lovely. just feels Pockets. like you could tra travel in those all the time. Perfect for travel. Yeah. As you can see, Nikki and I have just got some Birkenstocks. It was just something easy to, um, to grab. But also, the point is, it doesn't have to be a trainer all the time. Nikki here has got this beautiful coat on from Sweaty Betty again. It is, yes, yes. Sweaty Betty. Um, do you mind doing a turnaround? Because no. I think the profile on this coat at the back is really nice. Um, it is shower proof. It might, was it waterproof or shower proof? Yeah, waterproof. waterproof. Oh, waterproof, so even better. Um, long enough as well to give proper protection. You can turn back round again. And the tops for both of you are from Varley. 
aren't they? Mine is from Sweaty Betty. Mine has got the little arm holes, some holes even there. Um, it kind of hangs in that upside down frown, which is what I like about this, but it is coming across a little bit tighter on the chest. And I think I'm wearing a size medium already in it. So I would definitely size up in these. However, these are coming in true to size. I think yes. you've got a size smaller in yours. Um, I don't know what Mine's size. Mine's an extra large, an but extra I want to be a baggier, so yeah. Yeah, there's lots of room in here. Yeah, mm. both look really nice. And I think for dog walking, for hanging out of the house, for a Zoom call, because you've got the nice gold hardware on the top as well, practical, waterproof, mm -hmm. comfy. So Very comfy. Yes. <laughs> but hopefully, you'll agree, still stylish. Yeah. Yeah, you look all right. <laughs> just changing it up a little bit now we've picked a stripy shirt so oh these two have picked a stripy shirt this one is the me and m one it is very lovely i wear that with my casual navy trousers all the time and like nikki has done layering it up like that and keeping it open actually gives this really nice long line so it helps to break up the upper torso so if you ever feel in a bit block like that's how you wear it rather than doing it up so when you do it up like that, it might make you feel a little bit block-like across the middle. So they're really good for that. And for Antonia, the cropped version here just means it's not overwhelming her frame. Nikki has got on the Marks and Spencers version, which is the longer version. And I can tell you that that is probably about a quarter of the price of that one. Because that one is me and Emma. And I think both of the stripes and the fabric are equally comparable. Do you yeah, agree? They're quite similar. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice, actually. Layered it up just to show you, I'm conscious that we're going into autumn. And if I just show a shirt, people will then say, well, how do I finish that off? What sort of layer? exactly what Nikki's done here you just layer it up like that and um, I have just put on the bomber jacket that Nikki had earlier on and just to show you that that goes equally well on somebody with my shape as well I think I pointed out before but the collar detail there is lovely the gold hardware is really lovely and I've just gone for the me and M jean and it's the straight leg cropped flared again these look better on me when i have got the tall boot on or a heel look as nice on me when i've got a flat on because i am shorter somebody like yourself nikki would really suit these jeans so we're looking like triplets at the moment <laughs> um but the point is often i get comments like um oh well that looks nice on you because of your figure or because of your height or because of your hair color some sort of variation on that and my point is we're all in very similar looking outfits and we've got three very different body shapes different bust sizes different hip sizes everything so you can always create a similar look you just need to think about necklines and lengths of jeans and types of jeans so starting off with Antonia you've got a Bowden v-neck jumper on um, what size was that I think go? it's a medium Sorry, uh, let's have a look. Yes, it was a medium. Okay, so we haven't necessarily had to go up in that one. Where these two cashmere's here, we've had to go up a couple of sizes just to get that drape. Um, and these ones are from John Lewis. On the jeans, we've got an Abercrombie jean on yourself. Yep. Um, waist 29, length short. Yes. Isn't it? Is that right? That's right. And these are from the Curve range. Now, we're going to come to a pair of trousers in a minute, but generally speaking, when you are looking at Abercrombie, the curve range doesn't relate to um, a plus size figure. So, personally, I am in a curve range because I have got a bigger differentiation between my waist and my hips. It's not because I'm a plus size lady. These two here, ideally, you would be in the non-curve range because then you're straighter up through the middle. And if you wear the curve range, you're going to get a lot of extra bagging mm -hmm. around yeah. this area yeah. there. So it's almost a little bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? Because if you think, oh, I've got a bigger bust or I've got a bigger stomach, then I should be in the curve. Uh, it's not that. It's about the hip mm -hmm. to stomach ratio. They fit you really nicely. We're both wearing the same boots. I've just allowed my jeans to 
go to the full length. Love this v-neck on you. So this is a really nice level of v-neck. We're not showing any cleavage there, but we're, we're doing enough to shape your body and to not add any extra bulk to her upper torso. Um, the thick waistband here on the jumper is really flattering as well. The jeans, mango, mum mango, jeans. Mango, mum jeans, yeah. They have suited you in every colour, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> really nice. And then we've just gone for a heel for Nikki instead, a sling back heel. They're from H&M in their premium range. What I want to do now, though, is show you how we can layer this look up to make it more appropriate as the weather changes. Okay, there we go. All we have done is add a layer on. Oh, no, I changed the colour of my top. Sorry, my, my brown was a little bit too mucky against yeah. this brown. So I went a little bit fresher underneath. Um, but we've got the mango coat on. It comes out every single year. Sometimes a slight variation. It might have the epaulets on or something like that. But essentially, it's a wool long coat in a neutral colour. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and really elevates. You could equally wear that with trainers. Yes, you would not have. Yeah, and yeah, you wouldn't have to yeah. wear it with heels. Antonia has nicked the Goella coat. <laughs> Goelia? Goelia. Goelia, that's it, coat, um, which is just so lovely. Really nice, wool coat, hand really nice, bomber jacket, and as you can see, I've got on the Cezanne suede coat. So three very different looks, but the base layer is all the same. We've all got the jeans, we've all got the cashmere jumpers as well. So, yeah. There we go. Now, if you don't like cashmere or cashmere is out of your price point, I'll show you a jumper that is a really good alternative. And there you go. There's your alternative. So it's a really nice deep V-neck there. It's from H&M. I'm wearing that in a medium. Um, it's quite nice and oversized and that's how I do want it. One little tip for you. Often when you do go oversized to get this nice drape, the arms are then really baggy and even when you pull them up like that, they just keep coming down. So this is where we use our little elastic bands. So I get these, in the UK we get them from a shop called Primark um, and it is a pound for about 500 of these. Now look how small they are. They're absolutely tiny. They're actually hair bands. You can also get them from Amazon as well. So I will link the Primark ones and the Amazon ones. And then you just put them on your arm like that and then use that to keep it on your arm all day. They do not um, cut off your circulation. And in all honesty, they do break. So they're a one-time wear, but when you're only paying a pound or a dollar for 500, then I'm okay with that. And then that will keep my arm in place for the rest of the day. Got, apart from the t-shirts, yes. we've got exactly the same on in terms of the trousers and the um, top. What do we call this? Bomber. bomber a, a knitted bomber jacket. So these are a super high-waisted trouser, double belted as you can see, with the pleats quite low down. Now what that does is it gives a really smooth flat front and then the volume comes from lower on. Now I would probably bet you that if I had put these on on um, YouTube or on Instagram, somebody would have said, well, that's okay, but what happens if you've got a larger stomach? Or what happens if you've got a flatter bottom? Or what happens if you've got big bust? Well, this happens, and she looks lovely in them. So absolutely nothing. You've got to have the confidence to wear these things. They're really flattering here on her waistline. Do you mind just turning to the side? There we go. So the volume is coming out here rather than on her stomach. Now, to be fair, they're coming in a bit tight around your waist, aren't they? Just a little bit. Yeah. So we think you can turn, sorry, back round okay. again. So we think probably we would go up just, or at least we'd try the next size up, I think. Um, but the bomber's suiting both of us. Obviously, I've put the V-neck on Nikki. You could have gone for a low, low scoop neck as well. I think for, for yourself, because they were feeling a bit tight here, I was trying to prevent any sort of overhang you know what happens when you push it all up there, then we can get a bit of an overhang here. Yeah. So by putting the t-shirt on, that is just skimming over any potential um, overhang rather than highlighting the overhang. So that's the type of adjustment you make 
based on your body shape rather than saying oh I couldn't wear that outfit because I've got a larger stomach or I've got bigger boobs or whatever it is. And Tony we didn't have these trousers in your size did we but I think no. these would really suit I you and they come in the shorter size I believe don't hold me to that but River Island are usually very good um, but instead we've gone with the classic Abercrombie trouser not in the curve so this is just the yep. normal straight leg trouser, gone for black. These are a waist 29. You think in these, possibly the 30 would give a bit more comfort. Yeah, although actually, they feel all right. Are they? They feel all right, yeah. So can I just point out, that's the second time since we've been trying things on that you've put it on and, and went, oh, I need a bigger size. But then five minutes later, you've been fine with yeah, it. Yeah, I think once the heat from your body just stretches <laughs> the fabric a little bit. But yes, it's true. It is true, isn't it? So sometimes you just need to try these things on, wiggle around a little bit, mm. and you get a bit of extra room rather than automatically going to the bigger side and then ended up with a nappy bottom because <laughs> you've gone too big because you made that rash decision. Yes. Yeah. I think that's true with jeans especially. Particularly with jeans, yeah. Less so in the cotton trouser. Perfect length on you. Yes. We haven't had to take those up at all. So that's the short length in Abercrombie for you. Uh, cardigan is from Goelia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We've got quite a few of these in the office at the moment and we like all of them, don't we? Yeah, um, this one's very nice. Yeah, really, really nice quality. So there you go. That's it from us for this outfit. Okay, so this one might look a little bit random, but in my mind it isn't. Because what I wanted to show you here is with a white base layer on, We've all got a darker colour jean on, a white base layer and completely different looking jackets, all suitable for different events really, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, so starting off with Antonia there, super casual, um, but still got a bit of warmth to it on a, yeah. you know, mild autumn day like we're having at the moment. Nikki, we've smartened up because the trousers themselves are quite baggy and quite loose. So we picked out this blazer. This blazer is exactly the same blazer as um, we had it on in cream, cream. in the boucle yeah. and the herringbone yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, but this time it's in the black and white. So that is really lovely. And then I've gone completely off script and gone for a shorter bomber jacket. No, it's not a bomber jacket. What is it? A barber jacket. A barber jacket. <laughs> a wax jacket, that's the word. And it's not an official barber either. It is a Marks and Spencer's one. Oh, just notice it's got a nice little pocket there, which is always good for your iPhone. Um, it's also got a hood as well. I'm not sure whether it is splash proof, waterproof, water resistant or whatever. Um, but it's really, really nice. And one of the reasons I like it being more cropped is when I have got a wider leg trouser on, I don't feel like I'm absolutely swimming in fabric. Uh, that said, the other type of barber that I wear is that one. Again, this is a fake barber. It was from Mango. I think it was this was last year, but they're doing a very similar one. This year, we will link the closest that we can find. And that's another alternative as well. And that is typically how you'll find me dog walking, but with the, with the wellies on at the bottom. So I'm not sure you can dog walk in that one. No, no. no. But you'll be all right in there. You could, because you live like London as well as opposed to yeah. the middle of the countryside. I mean I'm feeling uh, you know weekly shop. Weekly shop? Weekly shop. Yeah. I you could even go to the pub in this. Yes you could go to the pub in that. Where are you going in that one? Well I think I could go out for lunch in this actually. Yeah. I think it's quite smart but still quite comfortable so relax, got chains on etc. So, yeah. yeah really yeah. nice. There we go. That's it from us. So that's it for part two of this Body Shape Masterclass. Obviously, if you haven't seen part one, I will put the link up for that right now. Thank you for watching. If you could press that subscribe button, we do bring you this material for free. It takes us a very long time to source the items, to buy the items, to return the items, to dress them on our models, to edit the video. And all we're asking in return is that you just press that subscribe button, press the thumbs up, share it with a friend, and we will be forever grateful and continue to bring you this content for free. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again soon.